So we continue here with 1218. We are progressing. It's a rather strenuous to read that. I think this is this paper is directed to, to people internally with the science of cognition and not to an amateur. It's also rather much of the hammer of thing here. Hammer of Penrose, Prebram, Carl Prebram, David Baum of holonomic brain. Uh, theory of the brain that takes into the assumption that the brain is actually a quantum derived. But the Zeno effect is to be recommended. It's incredibly interesting. It's rather amazing that nobody knows about the Zeno effect. And uh, the more I read it, the more I understand not being in a quantum physical mode, which is the only mode that can bring understanding of quantum physics. I would say now clearly after all these years, that there is no understanding possible surely about reading a book about quantum physics. That could never ever happen. You need to retrain your whole system and it's a retraining in a positive direction. Nothing is lost. Everything is gained. But it still needs to be done. And the second thing I realized, all the attempts earlier made that just jump into quantum mechanics and try to explain to people, uh, for instance, the paradoxes of quantum mechanics are bound to fail. They should fail because their system is classical and classical cannot accept multi-valued, cannot take multiple times, it cannot take multiple locations. There's a good reason why there are so many people within academia, for instance, that claims monosemism. Why? Is it the stern belief in monosemism? Is it part of an ideology? No, never is. It's not an ideology. It's an experience. It's an experience of being limited. It is being limited. limited. It is limited, incorporated, <laughs> as Jacques Derrida wrote about John Searle. This is what it is, nothing else. It's not a belief system. It is not that you cling into a theory that is outdated. It is not that you are uh, sort of manipulated by history to believe in these things. No, you are bodily embodying classic, classical physics in your tensions in your attack to your own system and the world, in the, in the absolute negligence of reality, and instead striving for transcendental meanings, private language, intention, all other trickery and imagery that are just words, empty concepts, concepts has, I would say, become emptier and emptier. It's an emptying out of our meaningful life world. It is closing down our all intellectuality. Might be the biggest disaster ever to hit humanity. I say it is, because without a spiritual intellectual life, what are we? We are just reflexes. We are like Pavlovian dogs, simply reacting, not thinking, not planning, not even being able to plan. And I also now think that the recommendation from two people are going to <laughs> point out here. One is Jordan Peterson, Tell 12 Rules, I think his book was For a Better Life is absolutely bound to fail, cannot succeed, cannot do anything good. 
can't become more rational, whatever that is in the classical sense. You can become predict, you can get predictive power in quantum mechanics, but that means that you need to adopt to quantum mechanics. You need to train yourself in quantum mechanics. Otherwise, no difference will happen. Just give me a second here before I... Sorry, it's just something I need to... The informational aspect of calcium 2 plus is encoded in positive and negative charges with microsites on the surface of a spectrum of flexible macromolecules that allow binary choices at various spatiotemporal levels. The latter may also depend on ultra rapid conformational changes in proteins in picoseconds as influenced by locally induced electromagnetic fields that thereby obtain a probabilistic electromagnetic vibratory character. An aspect that could also play a role in the present ISO energetic brain model. In turn, local magnetic fields can influence neural firing patterns and induce regional convergent zones of brain activity that are produced through subthreshold EPSP, EPSPs and inhibitory interneuronal synaptic activity being amplified by re-entry and recurrent circuitry. Total brain is determined by genetic and epigenetic information, neuroplasticity as well as functional cycles of efferent and afferent signals, that is internal copies and external mirror information that reflect the interaction with the whole body and its environment and dynamically produce our inner worldview earlier referred to us by as as personal universe. It should be mentioned here that much of the sequential steps depicted in figure 8 are situated in single neurons yet our model in the higher order levels requires an integrating modality in which the firing patterns of millions of neural neuronal networks are translated in a meaningful overall brain response Sensory processing involves the formation of wave packets affecting large population of neurons instrumental in the reciprocal broadcasting of excitatory patterns located at several brain regions and inducing neuronal assembly. It should be mentioned here that much of the sequential steps depicted in uh -huh. interesting, interestingly sorry in this process calcium waves along the astro astrolial syncytium may play a role contributing to collective oscillations synchrony and thereby to efficient binding of distributed neural activity. 
yet proper information integration, transmission, and exchange with outer information domains require a guided interactive quantum process in which the classical separation of sender and receiver is overcome through an act of measurement and proper resonance with the information source. This implicitly should be based on the phenomenon of entanglement and consequently on unitary and conscious field properties of the neuro and exosystems. Something that allows for continuous exchange of meaningful information with global magnetic fields as proposed by McFadden, Burke and Persinger and or a universal quantum knowledge field as earlier proposed by Bohm and Hailey. The latter concept was suggested to also contain personal information which is our mental double in the universal consciousness domain. Of note, the bottom-up and top-down vertical neural pathways depicted in figure 7 likely form a fine-tuned organization of neurological biochemical signature functionally connected with quantum-based information processing. <coughs> This requires that each sequential step should provide an output of the type that can be used in either of the two supposed systems. Quantum wave information should be collapsed or decohered to material signals. For instance, during synaptic vesicle release or through the earlier mentioned Casimir effects in the synaptic cleft. And material physical information should be translated to a waveform. Both of these processes, sorry I took my time to read, could be situated in microsites that house coherence slash decoherence conversion capability as recently suggested by Kaufman 2012. Alternatively, rather separately organized neurological and quantum pathways could horizontally communicate by correlated time domains or be helped by local resonant or entanglement properties. In this respect a number of potential intraneuronal uh, intra and interneuronal connective mechanisms should be taken into account. Solitons described as deceptive waves or tunneling biophotons ha have been proposed as intercellular intracellular local effectors. Interestingly, even a process of photon-quantum teleportation 
have been suggested for long distance signaling in the brain, a process that both employs classical and quantum elements. Erisman et al. stresses the dynamic character of multiscale flexible brain structure, varying over time and with a hierarchy of complexification levels in which higher cognitive <coughs> and mental processes can develop. This occurs within a four-dimensional global landscape with retrospective and prospective elements that, among others, result in changes in the synchronization of neuronal assemblies as well as a dynamic adaption of neuronal contacts. Such a multidimensional space slash time brain structure being open to external electromagnetic and quantum fields could also provide an interpretation framework for understanding of the un until now non-comprehensible time delays in subconscious and conscious perception. The inner knowing of qualia as well as the subjective experience of transpersonal and extrasensory events such as intuition, serendipity, clairvoyance, telepathy, In summary, we postulate a double countercurrent operating workspace, representing a complementary mode of isoenergetic and quantum information processing. This workspace houses cycling, vertically and horizontally interacting information flows that may be instrumental in highly rapid mental perception and causation and can accommodate time symmetry as well as non-linear elements. The vertically directed cycle of flow includes interaction with electromagnetic and quantum field fields that enable vice versa exchange of information with a universal knowledge field. Final considerations and discussions. The present overview highlights the, dile the dilemmas arising in understanding the time trajectories following internal and external stimuli of the brain. They are not fully comprehensible in terms of classical neurobiology of neuronal communication. In other words, current knowledge of the brain is insufficient to explain higher mental processes such as qualia and consciousness. Our core argument is that the basic constituting elements of the brain, including neurons, neuronal ag aggregates, molecules and metabolism, become only crucial for higher brain functions when considered in the context of a combination of emerging and quantum properties. Hence, we propose two supercausal modalities to explain such fast brain processes through superpositional quantum wave transfer and or immediate protein perturbations.
enabling reaction times below the millisecond range. In this framework we consider two non-classical models that may be operative in this phenomena. The ISO energetic model proposed earlier and a variety of quantum models that also have been dealt with in an earlier report of the information universe. We consider isoenergicity as an emerging property implying that brain states might change with minimal energy via, for instance, random transitions of molecular configuration. Yet only when operating in concert, quantum transitions provide useful additional information of the outer world or out of the internal biological processes. The model is based on the assumption that there are minimal interneuronal energy barriers and that brain metabolism is primarily aimed to guarantee isoenergicity and high potential <laughs> energy. Such a brain conformation, conformation is considered as optimal to translate minor perturbations, including elementary quanta into physiological activity and originates in evolution. Sorry. The model is based on the assumption that there are minimal interneuronal energy barriers and that brain metabolism is primarily aimed to guarantee isoenergicity and high potential energy. Such a brain conformation is considered as optimal to translate minor perturbations, including elementary quanta into physiological activity and originates in evolution. The quantum models are based on the idea that mental states emerge from elementary quantum transitions and quantum fields. Quantum mechanical theories introduce such counterintuitive phenomena as backward causation and feeling the future in addition to nonlinear information processing. Alternatively, the quantum mechanical theory of mental processes may be conceived as a metaphor, as an epistemic theory, rather than as an ontological concept. 
In the previous section we concluded that the isoenergetic approach and the quantum mechanical concepts are not mutually exclusive and may in fact exhibit some degree of mutual dependence. Our keynotes are 1. There exist configurations or states of the brain that may be directly associated with mental processes that have a physical and or wave informational aspect. 2. The two mind theories describing the presumed emergent or backward causative brain configurations remain to be further developed and or refined. 3. The latter is also subjective related to subjective intrapersonal and potential transpersonal experiences and perception of qualia for quantum concepts and models useful to understand metal processing apply to the presumed physical In the previous section we concluded that the isoenergetic approach and the quantum mechanical concepts are not mutually exclusive and may in fact exhibit some degree of mutual dependence. Four quantum concepts and model models useful to understand mental processing apply to the presumed physical complexities of the brain as well as a universal knowledge domain that is four-dimensional with b-directional time five substance or multi-aspects dualism is rejected by us in favor of complementarity of brain processes. 6. The creative power of biological evolution. The tendency to develop life by embodiment of useful information can be attributed both to elementary physical phenomena such as self-aggregation into emergent higher complexity and to quantum field mediated backward causation through selection of parallel superposition positions. Seven, it is unlikely that either of these processes alone constitute, constitutes the life conferring properties of nature, including the proper functioning of the human brain. theories discussed in this paper collectively contain one or more of the following ingredients. First, they avoid classical causation and embrace uncertainty, raising the possibility that mental phenomena cannot be governed by presumably 
deterministic nervous processes. and thus leave room for intuition and free will. Second, they stress the role of some form of universal consciousness with which the individual mind and consciousness interact. Third, they assume that human consciousness can exert causal power in the physical world. Fourth, they may explain transitions of mental modalities from sub or unconscious thoughts and processes to consciousness and vice versa. Fifth, they make a distinction between time perception and common physical external time. Sixth, they include the possible non-temporality of past, present and future. That is allowing backward causation. Such quantum mind-brain mechanisms can be fully described in physical and biological terms as related to various levels of organization from the micro to the mic macro scales. In some of these quantum mechanical brain theories, dualism of mind and matter is tacitly assumed but such a concept is not preferred by the present authors. <coughs> Any organism and the brain is considered as an open system, meaning a continuous interaction with the environment. Hence, apart from sensory information, wave information or quanta are continuously imported while at the same time wave information is exported. An open system is necessary to achieve and maintain a maximum capacity for expressing as many alternative brain state. states, neural configurations, behavior, etc. as possible. As a general principle, sequential as well as parallel transitions of multiple states can be realized. That is when the energy barriers between these brain states are low or more generally defined, occur at a higher potential energy. Hence, not only a personal brain is built up and maintained in individual life, but at the same time, concomitant personal state is produced within a universal consciousness domain that is a dynamic knowledge field, accumulating new data and personal experiences during life. These new properties within the field obey other laws or descriptions than the laws that are instrumental in the description of the world from which they originate. Localization of the accumulating transitions is not only the basis of experience and behavior but also of consciousness. Only by localization in space-time universe of the brain we become aware of otherwise unconscious processes or thoughts. 
not because we directly observe these thoughts as in the perspective of a homunculus, but because their localization is the result of an unconscious and also conscious activity. Attention and intention at the same time. In practice it takes some time before unconscious events become conscious. Most neurophysiological experiments indicate that about 350 milliseconds are required for human to become conscious of or making a decision for action on the basis of subconsciously provided information. Interestingly, such rather long delays are also in line with the idea that consciousness and mind are imminent properties of collective quantum states that intrinsically bear information of past and future aspects. In other words, the particular subconscious information represents data derived from future states 350 to 500 milliseconds preceding the time that the particular information reaches the conscious domain. Evidence was developed to demonstrate this, that this phenomenon depends on an antedating of the delayed experience. There is a subjective referral backward in time to coincide with the time of the primary cortical response to the earliest arriving sensory signals. The subjective referral in time is analogous to the well-known subjective referral in space. We propose the brain as an organ with high and potential energy to be maintained as a constant as possible. This is achieved by energy metabolism, providing fast recovery from decreased potential energy as the result of neural activity. Thus far we have stressed the idea that the brain is an organ with hitherto unrecognized properties that might be directly related to mental activity. This idea has been extended by Hasson and co-workers by proposing the possibility of brain-to-brain -brain coupling. This is achieved among others by mimicking and empathy as a central feature for creating and sharing a social, cultural world. Crucial additional aspects of such emergent information processing as well as intuitive time reversed, intuitive time reversed explorations and or potential field mediated transitions of information are assumed in our paper. Such aspects can be understood in terms of a non-reductionist conception of the relation between the lived and the living, between conscious experience and biological processes, since state factors can be interpreted as bearers of future information. Beauregard and O'Leary stated in 2007, more than a century ago, William James proposed that the brain may serve as a permissive, transmissive, expressive function rather than a productive one, 
in terms of the mental events and experiences it follows. James Bergson and Huxley, and more recently Jan and Dan, speculated that the brain acts as a filter or reducing valve by blocking out much of and allowing registration and expression of only a narrow band of perceivable reality. They state that in the course of evolution the brain has been trained to eliminate most of those perceptions that do not directly aid our, our everyday survival. A hypothesis of the development of the brain in two opposite directions, that is improvement of technical and logical abilities, yet loss of contemplative spiritual potential, represents a challenging one from all kinds of perspectives. Some quantum mechanical theories are solely based on bottom-up information flow processes from the micro level. However, assuming that brains are immersed in and directly influenced by quantum fields, a top-down modality should be integrated. The latter mechanism may be particularly relevant for the cerebral cortex. <coughs> Many quantum mechanical brain theories focus on mental, that is top-down processes, implying a prominent role of the cerebral cortex as the primary source of quantum interaction. In summary, the bottom-up processes are crucial to inform the organism and its brain about the outer world, whereas the top-down mechanism is instrumental in realizing the integral, non-conscious and conscious behavior. Some have argued that the brain might act as a quantum computer, but these possibilities seem highly unlikely, if not impossible, because the brain, brain's temporal spatial structure is too diverse, while computer-like processes can only be achieved in an environment non-compatible with life. Moreover, it may be a fundamental feature of brain processes that they are not calculable. If, according to Hammer of Penrose, noise protected brain structures facilitate the transfer of quantum information into and from the brain, then an important issue is how the organism does react to that kind of information. This is also relevant in the context of biological evolution. That is, relevant information helps the organism or the species to survive and adapt to environmental challenges. It stands to reason that in these interactions nature will use all useful information available including quantum wave resonance that in contrast to collapse modalities such as matter contains information on past and future states. In the present essay we consider the possibility that the brain and its mental aspects are somehow coupled to the universe, that is, that apart from 
neurobiological quantum mechanical processes, cosmological quantum mechanical, quantum mechanical processes affect brain transitions. A unified theory of mind and matter had been postulated earlier on the basis of information viewed upon as the most fundamental element for the description of the fabric of reality. On the basis of such an informational interaction, some aspects of cosmic physics, as for instance the second law of thermodynamics, might apply directly to the brain. In other words, life with its potential energy and iso energy city, energy, energicity, as well as the ability to screen and collect useful information, does in a way counteract the destructive tendency of increased entropy and at the same time may employ entropic gravity mechanisms to materialize essential knowledge. Perhaps this bimodal modality has been foreseen by Erwin Schrödinger as the potential contribution of quantum processes in creating mental dimensions. And that's the end of that. I will make a conclusion here. A summary. It is incredibly interesting to realize that without having quantum mechanical take on the brain, we cannot understand anything about consciousness. And it, this actually obliterates all of the claims of everyone from Daniel Dennett at his end, Chalmers, and Couples Churchland, and so forth. The quantum mechanical brain is intensely different. It is a marvelous construction out of physics itself. And there are so many reasons why it should be expected. One I stated before, I'm going to restate it until it sticks into your brains or heads or minds, whatever you want, <laughs> uh, depending how you see quantum mechanics. And that is, why on earth would the brain follow Newtonian classical physics? as constructed of 1689. Can anyone give me a good answer to that? The second is, why would evolution of life on Earth ignore quantum mechanics, not make use of it for survival, for some reason saying, hmm, that's too good for us, we're not going to use it. Third, we already know quantum biology has just recently started, which is very important as well to remember, but we already know that several organisms do use quantum mechanics. And there is no reason to wait until it's a proven fact that even humans do it. It is inconceivable that we don't. But for instance, the robin makes use of only one single photon to localize magnetic latitudes. In plants, photosynthesis makes use of quantum effect to extract as much as possible of the energy that light gives it. It has almost a hundred percent transfer, whereas solar panels gives us a couple of tenths of percent, if I remember correctly. The 
metamorphosis of different animals from one type of life form, one morph, morphing into something completely different is a quantum mechanical effect. The fourth thing, we have not been able to explain anything with the classical concept. The emergent consciousness is an empty con concept, I would say. It's just an invention to stop thinking or answer a question, what is consciousness? It doesn't mean anything. I've been thinking of it over and over again and I can't find anything of meaning in to say that consciousness is emerging from material substances. Why? We already know, and that could be the fourth, that materialism or the idea of matter in the way we use it in everyday language is stemming from a historical development in pre-Socratic time in Greece. We know that. So why would reality follow something that is made up by humans in a specific epoch in the development and in a geographically uh, designated area? Why would physics follow the ideas of the physicos of the Ionian coast in Microasia? Could anybody answer that? I think that question is not possible to answer because the answer will be it's a nonsensical put question. It doesn't need any answer. It's like asking how long is the string? It's exactly the same type of question. And what is consciousness put in a Newtonian way is a nonsensical question because Newtonian classical physics obliterates consciousness. It is based on the absence of consciousness, the absence of a subjective realm by in itself. So it creates more paradoxes than it solves. It's just a way of saying something, but it doesn't have any even private meaning. David Chalmers is not saying something when he says that consciousness is emergent. He's just uttering a phrase that cannot be understood by anyone, especially not himself. It's very promising what Mayer is painting up in this rather extensive article. And I think, say thank you very much for having the patience listening to me during the last three episodes. It's a very tough material to digest. It is information filled, but I think the most difficult thing is it's nothing like anything I've seen before which is always the case with quantum mechanics it's always different whereas I would say all other sciences until they acknowledge quantum mechanics will be in some way very very similar it's very hard for me now to see any difference between anthropology sociology psychology and those subjects they are all Newtonian in some way. And by putting quantum into these ter territories like quantum biology, we can, with the quantum psychology, make something working, something that means something, because the only chance of something meaning anything is to make it quantum mechanical. Thereby, we induce the subject. When we have the subject, we can have meaning and we can also have a living reality, both with potentiality and actuality. Otherwise, we don't have neither. We don't have materiality and we don't have mentality. So the question put on by David Chalmers could be reversed. We cannot explain what is an atom or what is materiality. It never meant anything from the very beginning. If it were to be have, me have any meaning, it would not be in complete colli uh, collision with quantum mechanics. And thereby I end this trilogy of F. K. Meyer's interesting article. Say so thank you very much and have a very pleasant afternoon.
Bye bye. Oops, it is.